Hello everyone, welcome to our very first Fire Emblem Aid Randomizer Iron Man. In this challenge, if a unit dies, they stay dead and they don't come and we are not restarting any maps for anyone. And if we game over, that save file is gone, just like in a Pokemon Nuzlocke. However, in this case, um, for the randomizer, we've changed up the, cl the classes of the main protagonists as well as the enemies. As you can see, Erica, who normally has the Lord class, is now an archer, and the growth rates of her stats when she levels up are also are also changed, and this creates a lot of interesting scenarios throughout the game. So here we are getting started in chapter one. We've got some axe fighters, bows, and also a wyvern rider which conveniently we are effective against. Ooh, and we have a Worm Slayer on Seth. That is quite nice. Alright. Normally we would think archers aren't great classes because they don't have um, close range counter attacks. However, for this challenge, it's not that, it's not that bad because we're probably not going to be wanting to have our lord soak up damage anyway. So not being able to counterattack isn't really that big of a problem in, the, in this scenario. And you gotta love all of those unnecessary critical hits on the second attack. Smooth sailing for the first turn. Let's have Seth clean up this archer, and or not. And see whether or not we can get Erica over to O'Neill. Do we want, we want to clean that up? Speed 4, speed 8, cut 10. Funny enough, we don't actually want to fight O'Neill this turn because you might double double attack Erica and cause her to die immediately, ending the run. And well, that'd be a pretty sad start to this, wouldn't it? So let's have Seth try again. Oh, only five damage, that's not bad. All right. There we go, getting some experience, and hopefully we will get a nice level up off of the uh, O'Neill kill here. There we go. Now, one unique thing about the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games is that they operate off of a dual RN system, meaning that 79 for a hit rate is actually a little bit higher than the than the printed because it's the average of two of two random numbers, and that was actually a pretty good good level up for Erica. So here we are on to map number two, where we'll get Franz and Gilliam. That does not look like a super friendly crowd to be facing. Yeah, no, I don't like that at all. Mages are generally not very, not very nice. Hey, what's our defense? Oh, this guy can't actually even hurt us with a slim sword. Wonderful. That guy can hurt us though. Question is, do we care? Not really. We want to get everyone up over towards Franz, where Franz and Gilliam are, and keep getting experience on Erica. So she will be with us for the for the entire game. All right, and we'll run Seth up over here. Excellent, gotta love it when units do not take damage. Alright, looks like we have a journeyman. Yep, 
Journeyman with hammer. Super effective against knights. Okay, that's workable. Oh, and you have Ragged Knife. Awesome. Alright, Franz is probably going to be very useful because he has an effective cavalry weapon. So, mm -hmm. there we go. Clean, cleaning things up off of the map. Seven. Yes. All right. Well, let's see if you'll come up and attack. It's nine. It's oh, that's fine. Yeah. Despite generally being relatively sim simple maps to start with, you do always want to double check them things in, ran in randomizers because some enemies might be a lot more lethal than their counterparts in the, in the vanilla game. And um, things to watch out for are increased critical hit chance as well as, as better accuracy or, dam or damage on some of their weapons. forgot about those guys. Now we'll get to see whether or not they have anything that threatens lethal. Iron Bow, Iron Lance, and Slim Sword. Nope. Oh, and in this randomizer, there are, are not a ton of... I would say... Um, there, are, there aren't a ton of uh, random settings other, th other than classes and growths, where some randomizers take things a little bit more extreme and also, and also change up weapons. And in those ones, you can have a surprise unit effectiveness or, or have other effects like poison, which can be incredibly detrimental to just going, uh, going through the game without having in any of the prep work for the um, for those types of status effects. Right. All right. And generally, units have lower lower res than defense, so mages are often quite dangerous to deal with even though they are um, are kind of kind of flimsy themselves. Let's check this mage range. Yeah. All right. Oops, forgot Gilliam could just wait on the wait on the fort for a free heal if he does get attacked. And as I mentioned before, we want to get as much experience as possible on Erica since she's going to be with us for the entire game. Even though she has a fixed chapter in which she can promote to an advanced class after, we do need her to to survive the entire time. Even if it is just because of the uh, Reagan life effectiveness, Franz is looking like someone we're going to be relying on quite a bit, quite a bit, because he has relatively good base stats and just the effectiveness to t taking down cavalry and armored units was just incredibly helpful. It's, yep, that's a good one.
we'll just have Seth clean, clean up some of the back. And since he's already in a promoted class, Seth is probably going to be sticking with us for a while too, so long as we don't accidentally get him killed on any of the enemy units. And even though they might have the possibility of damaging Franz, most of these units prioritize lords and, uh, and also avoid counterattacks. And the, the swordsman went after Erica instead of Franz. But in this case, the archer goes after Franz. Goodbye, mage. Nobody likes you. could also clarify being no one likes enemy mages but everyone but mages on your team are a very good thing to have uh you just wait there Gilliam Franz go up there and Erica can just wait the crit animations uh, though it's been settled many times before the crit animations in this game are quite wonderful So we're just going to enemy phase this guy, meaning we're just going to stand in front of him and let him attack us first, and that way if he does hit, we're able to heal and we don't take extra damage on, on both turns. And if we're in lethal range, we're able to counterattack and deal with him first. Let's see what we have in terms of support. Alright, only one damage, so that's not really going to work very well. He does heal, but we can take two hits, and if we hit him four times, it's lethal, and we do have vulneraries, so we're going for it. And since he has no crit chance, this is not a super risky play. And the other reason to go for it is he does heal when he is on the when he's on the gate, meaning if we wait along too much, he'll go back to full, he'll go back to full health. All right, chapter two done. We are just going to give the hammer to Seth, since Gilead does not hit things very hard relatively, and axes generally have pretty low accuracy, so they're not always the best things to have around, though we'll, we'll see what happens as we go into the later maps, or especially since hammers have very low, very low accuracy, since they are designed to hit armored knights effectively. So they're good for breaking high defense, but otherwise kind of useless if you don't have a different backup. Alright, map number three. Let's see if we can actually rescue Ross, or if we've just been a little bit RNG screwed. Alright, Ross is an archer. Not great. Alright, Garcia being a knight's pretty good. Awful speed, but otherwise great stats. And let's see what he has for weapons. Well, we don't actually have any cavalry, so that's nice. Toxin Lance, Free Vulnerary.
and Molder's a dancer. That is absolutely wonderful. All right. That is incredibly useful, as well as Vanessa being a wyvern rider. So now we can actually just take extra, extra turns. All right. We're just gonna put Vanessa there. We don't have a dedicated healer, so that's going to be a little bit rough. But we'll see how it goes. And we still might get one in the next couple of maps. Antitoxin. Well, that could potentially save, a, save us in a pinch. And in this case, we can actually just grab Ross and pull him right on out of there because because we have the dancer unit. And Garcia is dying to the cutthroat. Well, this is going to be interesting. Alright, we at least have Ross, so now Ross isn't going to accidentally die on us. And you've got the toxin lance. How do we do here? Not great. Alright. You know, we'll risk it to see if we can buy some hand axes. No, but we can get an iron axe. Well, iron axes are good to have, so we'll grab some of those. And... We'll grab an iron lance for the convoy. Alright, what is Mulder's defense? Zero, but nine speed. Okay, we can work with that. Ooh, that's nice. Someone's accuracy can go up. What is... Alright, your skill's pretty low. And your skill's also pretty low. Yours is good. Alright, let's see. Where can he go? Pretty much everywhere. forgot to give Seth the axe, but since he's not a paladin and he's a hero, the horse slayer is not effective on him. Oh, and in this randomizer, there's also a 5% chance that enemy units will drop in at 
an, ex an extra free item just for fun and spicing things up and as well as the rewards for saving villages and opening chests have also been randomized just for some extra fun. Well, it would have been better if you'd stayed on the fort, but that's okay. We can uh, we can still work with that. Uh, let's see. Where well, can you go? Not super. HP defense isn't bad. We can work with HP defense. Oops, forgot to give Ross his animations. Time to see if we can get down to this village. Because this guy with only an iron axe is not super is not super threatening. So we can just run Seth down here, conserve we'll conserve the steel sword and cha change over to the axe. He can't actually reach anybody. And we might have moved Erica a little bit too far forward, but she has really good defense. So I'm not super concerned, and we will just bring everybody back and end turn and see whether or not anything interesting and fun happens. Cool, that, mm, that recruit can't damage mm, Garcia, so we are in wonderful shape. to the village. Let's see if we get anything useful. Iron Blade! Alright, that's actually pretty darn good for Seth. It's a little bit worse than uh, worse than the Steel Sword, but it is a using it is a usable weapon. Right. And we're just gonna focus on Erica for the EXP off this Pegasus Knight. Yeah, that's worth it to try for. Well, not much Vanessa experience, but that is okay. Or just to move Erica out of the way so that way the bandit will only be attacking someone, in this case Gilliam, who is also a journeyman and can counterattack with an axe. Good thing Gilliam has speed. Alright, 
Well, hopefully this guy will just lock on to Seth and we'll be able to clear out the map. And Eric has got 90. Well, we have a dancer, so the wonderful thing about that is we get to just try again. <laughs> it's like the first shot never happened. And another nice level up, HP skill luck is per is perfectly fine for for the long haul. And hopefully this guy Yep, there we go. Running right on over to Seth. set to go to the next map where we'll be getting Colm and Nemi and we'll see whether or not we have any thieves and staff users because eventually we're going to run into a fog of war map and if we don't have either of those or some torches things could get a little bit dicey for this Iron Man. Well I hope you've uh, enjoyed everything so far and we're gonna, gonna take a quick break here and we will see you in the next one. Thank you very much.